and, and I believe she's on the call with us right now. And she'll be speaking to us about making money trading volatility. Okay. And to start it off, Miss Armo. Unmuted. Are you live with us? Yes. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you loud and clear. I will switch over the controls to you right now. And the audience should see your screen very, very soon. And when they can, you have the floor. All right. Let me know if you can see. Yes, I can. That's Manhattan. Uh, let me just make sure where if I see people with the questions. How do I see the questions? I'll send that over to you right now. Okay. Okay, okay wonderful. <clears throat> Excuse me. Can everyone hear and see the slide? Happy Saturday, everyone. Beautiful day here in Manhattan, very sunny. Actually supposed to be up to 62 degrees today, which is really weird. <laughs> Two days ago, it was 25, so I don't know, crazy weather to start out 2020. Uh, but definitely, the year has started out with a bang. So it's interesting because we're doing this webinar today, Saturday, and we saw an extreme bullish move in the market this week to start at the full week of the year and now next week guess what the chinese delegation is coming to washington supposedly supposedly they're going to sign the trade deal i don't have 100 percent conviction that's going to happen but what if it does either way we're going to see some a, a, a good week this is going to be a good week for the market if you know how to play it so that's the key so volatility doesn't necessarily mean going down volatility means something unexpected something could keep going up that you don't expect something could could go up and you think it's going to go down or vice versa okay volatility is something that happens it's totally unexpected and in a big way okay and as an individual trader i'm an individual you're an individual when we're looking to take positions we want to have big moves that's how you can make a lot of money and I heard the previous person talking about Tesla. That was the trade of the week this week. We are going to talk about Tesla today as well. So this is about making money trading in a volatile market and how to get the trading results you desire in 2020, which obviously when you start new year, you want to start the year off right. There's no time like the present. Okay. And if you have questions, you can go along. I'm seeing them here now. I got the, the jiggy up. I will see the questions as we go along today. If you want to reach out to me after the webinar, <clears throat> later on in the week or this weekend, you can email me, melissa at thestockswish.com, or you can call me at 929-3200-GAP. You can follow me on Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, or Skype. I do appear on Fox News, Fox Business Network, CBS, and Monday afternoon around 1 o'clock, I'll be on Ameritrade. So you can tune into Ameritrade Network. I'll be talking about um, some earnings that are coming out Tuesday. We have the banks reporting on Tuesday morning. So I'll be talking about those on Monday on Ameritrade. So let's get right into it. So this is a year to have amnesia about anything that happened in prior years, whether it was 2018, whether it was 2017, whether it was 2019. If you've been trading for the last 10 years and losing, let it go. Okay, there's 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 something there's there's a lot of meaning behind numbers not just in the market but in life okay this is my belief system and so 2020 can really be the year when you turn things around if in fact that's what you want to do now if you're floundering if you're still in that floundery floundery mode today is january 11th you've got to to get out of it okay because the new year is here it's a new energy and and i'm telling you the trains that we saw this week have really sealed the momentum for this calendar year and 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 i'm talking about the market too okay and we're getting into an election year 2020 is an election year as well again look for volatility for that too so when you start out and you're starting out a new year think of it like you're going up the stairs you're getting to the top and don't worry about things that happened to you in the past okay and trading is a process and not not doing it per se because when you start out you may have wins you may have losses but it is a process to get to the top to the destination where you're going to get good to get really 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 good and when you get really really good does that mean you never take a loss no there are days that I take losses trading is about high odds okay you have to look at high odds and you look at low odds so I have a strategy that I look at it's based on stock scaffolding we're gonna talk about today but it's about odds. I look at high odds. Nothing is 100%. You don't know. 
but I'm looking at high odds. I want to take trades that have high odds of working, okay? That's how you have more winners than losers because ultimately trading is a skill. The knowledge, you do it. You constantly, constantly practice, learn the knowledge. You practice the skill. You get better over time. So I started trading in 2008. Now here it is 2020, so 12 years. So I'm, I'm the best I've ever been now. I'm hoping to get better. So as, as time goes on, you should be getting better and better and gaining your skill. Now you may think, well, I have good skills, but if you're not making money, then the skills aren't good enough. The skills aren't sharpened. As fun as trading is, and as fun as looking at charts is, the most fun thing really is the profits, okay? And that is the goal. That is the goal that you're going up the staircase to get is the money. So you wanna see profits whether it's profits per week, per month, or by the end of the calendar year, okay? So the preparation that you do today, January 2020, <clears throat> again, first month of the year, that's gonna help you to see the success that you wanna see fast forward December 2020. One year from now, January 2021, okay? All the steps that you're taking today will lead you to the successful path and to the destination that you wanna get on tomorrow. So you have to take the steps. Everybody, everybody, we live in this very environment where it's like right now, the second, I want everything yesterday, me, me, me. I get it, I'm an impatient person myself, but when I look back and when I began trading, if I had just, I, I, if I had, just had a teeny weeny little bit more patient, I probably would have taught myself, which I did teach myself how to trade. I would have, the, it would have been a smaller, uh, less, uh, it would have been a, a, a shorter road for me and it would have been less difficult. But I, I threw myself into it, wanting it to happen immediately. And sometimes things just don't happen that way. So once you have that proper mindset, you'll be a lot better off. It doesn't mean you can't make money right away. So it doesn't mean that you, that you can't. I'm talking about the amount of money the amount of money that you want to make. A lot of people want to start out, and I've heard some absolutely ridiculous things where people say you could take $500, make 20 grand in a month with a $500 account. That is absolutely absurd. It's completely, completely absurd. As good as I am, and I'm fabulous at what I do, that would be impossible, okay? So once you understand that the goals you want to achieve financially, the amount of money that you want to make is possible, that you get on the road and start taking the right steps with the right knowledge, preparing yourself to get to that point where you are doing this for a living, where you are, where you are making uh, the money that you want to make. Once you see that that's possible, okay, you're going to see that's possible from green, Green on a Monday, green on a Tuesday, green on a Wednesday, green on a Thursday, green on a Friday. The green, 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 the series of gains will make you realize, oh, I really can do this. I, I, and your confidence builds all along. Does that make sense? Okay. Someone's asking how much money I made in 2019. Well, I do a combination of options and day trades. We're going to talk about both today. You can go subscribe to my YouTube channel if you want to see the tracking for the trades for 20, 2019. Galar, Galarado, if I pronounced your name right. So anyways, my risk per trade though, Galarado, is an advanced risk. So we're gonna look at advanced risk today. But the point I'm trying to make here is, I'm risking an average of $2,000 a day trade. If you can't, risk what you can. It doesn't mean you'll never be able to risk $2,000 a day trade. It means that you risk 100. You risk 200, you go up the ladder. That's the point of the staircase at a point I was trying to make. So when I look at a return that I'm trying to get for the risk, just to give you an average, I'm usually looking to flip it over one on the day trades, okay? And 50% to 100% on the options. So if you're risking 2,000, you're looking to make 2,000. If you're risking 100, you're looking to make 100, okay? So if you risk $100 a day in a day train, you should be looking to make an average of $500 a week. If you're risking $2,000 on a day trade per day, one trade a day, you see, you see how the money adds up. But the point I'm trying to make is that if you can't afford to risk an advanced risk right away, just making any gains will get you there. You will get to that point tomorrow, okay? 
by doing the necessary preparation today. When you have absurd uh, expectations, it, it's problematic. It's not only problematic for your confidence, it becomes problematic for your actual account because then you will chase stuff, you will take wrong actions, and that's not good for you for your progress long term, okay? So take away the positive to move forward. Whatever, whatever you learned in the past, the positive stuff, take it into 2020, into this year, and the negative stuff, don't look back, okay? If you have big goals, whatever those goals are, whatever you consider big goals, again, I live in Manhattan, so, so what I think of as a lot of money is different from what probably may, somebody living in a different place thinks of a lot of money, okay? We all have different ideas of what rich is, what wealthy is, what can sustain us, okay? So we write it on a piece of paper. Again, it's January, and so by the end of 2020, I'm gonna be making this much money in the market per week or per month, okay? You look at it as a journey. It doesn't mean you go hog wild out of the game. So it's about the idea of becoming stable, financially independent, stability, long term, okay? Make sense? Anyways, we're gonna talk about two different types of trading like I was saying, day trains and options trading. There are many different types of traders. We are focusing today on day trading, but we will talk about some options. So what type of trader are you? Long-term, short-term, what can you afford to risk per trade? What size account can you open? Okay, you have to think about this too. It is important for you to know which category you fit into first, and then you set the proper expectations for yourself. Before you even begin to risk any money in the market at all, you should have a strategy that you follow, which we're gonna talk about today. My strategy is gaps, okay? And I don't think it's necessary to have a mentor, but I do think it's helpful. So I call trains live in the room. I give the entry, the stop, and I give the exit, okay? If you decide to take my program, you can, you can join the trading room, and I'll call all the trades live for you Monday through Friday. I think that is very helpful. Now, I teach in the class. If you want to trade by yourself alone, you can. I teach you how to do it. So it's not like you have to rely on me forever, but I definitely think having a mentor is helpful. Again, we're gonna talk about Tesla. This week was, was a very interesting week because I called a bunch of trades in Tesla on the options newsletter. So there's a newsletter I have where I call the trades. The trades get emailed to you, you take them. People took some of them, didn't take others. I think people didn't, didn't believe the call I was making that Tesla would go the way that it did. Some people got some of the trades and some people didn't do all the trades because they were almost shocked. But having a person directing you, guiding you is very, very helpful. Okay, and then hopefully at some point you'd be able to do it on your own without my guidance. Now, there are two types of accounts you can have. One is with a margin account for the day trades, and one is a cash account if you want to do options. Now, you can have a margin account for options if you want to. That means if you want to get in, get out of, of uh, options trades as day trades. <clears throat> and again, we're going to talk about gaps in a minute here. We just want to talk about these different types of trading. So when you have a margin account, are these cash positions? No. Day trading is done with a margin account, in, out, in, out. Sometimes we're in and out, five minutes, 10 minutes, three minutes, okay? You're making the money between 9.30 and four and you're out and you're flat. So you receive margin from the broker. You can open up a proprietary brokerage account or you can open up a retail brokerage account, okay? Broker margins vary from two to one, four to one, or even 10 to one, depending where you go, but you must be out by four on all day trades, <coughs> okay? Now the options sometimes we hold overnight. But I'm really not doing the options that far out in advance either. You can do options as day trades though too, but you'd have to have a margin account for that. But either way, if you're day trading, just so you understand, because some people don't understand this and I feel the need to explain it out of the gate here, you're not outright buying the stock. You're, you're, not, you're not outright buying it. You don't need a million dollars cash to take a position in something like Tesla, okay? Do you understand? It's you're trading it on margin or you're doing the option, you pay the cost of the option contract. So my system can be traded with any size day trading account, but the amount of money you risk per trade has to be in accordance with the size of your account, okay? You need to have um, a, a, a charts and you need to have a level two to take trades. I do not trade penny stocks. 
I think they're crap, new loan float stocks, nothing like that. I'm looking for institutional buyers and institutional sellers, and my system pinpoints them in the gap, okay? And all the stocks we trade are volume, they're actively traded in the market, and they're mostly our mid-price range, although I will say Tesla was on the expensive side. But if you wanna trade options with a cash account, and where you're limited, how many you can get in and get out, or if you want to set up an account, you can open up an options account with as little as $2,000, okay? Again, your risks will have to be in accordance with that. You would not obviously risk $2,000 in one trade if you only had $2,000 in your account, okay? You have to think normal when I'm talking about this, and, I, and I'm explicitly saying this here because I find that people have these overblown expectations, not, not in general how much money you can make in the market, but how much you can take and how much you can make. Do you understand what I'm saying? Okay, let's talk about trading again. You can work from home as a day trader. Now, why do people find trading hard? They very often second guess themselves. They don't have conviction and they very often do not get the direction right, okay? They just don't get the direction right. They just, they think something is a long when it's a short or vice versa, okay? And they're not focused. So. Here was McDonald's. This is a, one of the top uh, day trades from 2019. Again, this is back in October 2019. Stock closed here, gap down. Now, what do I do? I get up in the morning and I look for gaps. This was a gap. This is before this happened. I rated the gap using my system predicting the stock was lower. It was a short. You could have bought a put. You could have day traded short. You actually could have done a swing trade to the downside too. Shorting it, okay? Now, stock was up here. What is a gap? A gap is the difference between the close and the open. Stocks gap down, stocks gap up. Let's find a gap up here. This is a gap up over here. This was back in September. This is a gap up in here. This was in October. This is a gap down. This is a gap up. This was a gap up. This was a gap up. This was a gap down. Not all gap downs can be shorted. Not all gap ups can be bought. Okay, so how do you make money in the market? I get up in the morning in the pre-market, I'm looking at the pre-market data, and I go through my system to determine what this stock, whatever's on my radar, this happened to be MCD, is going to do. And using my point rating system, I predict that the stock is going to move lower. And then we wait to the open to do the trades. So I'm not trading in the pre-market, I'm not trading in the post-market, okay? Does that make sense? Any other questions? So, what I'm looking at is the first part of the day, the first 30 minutes of the day, the first 60 minutes of the day, that's what I'm focusing on. But either way, even if I'm holding something overnight, it's in an option where I have a set risk, I have a fixed risk. So even if the stock goes against me, I am only would lose the cost of the actual trade. So it's not in a position in margin overnight. And that's very important for you to understand as well. All the Dane trades, we use stops. I put the stop in. If it goes over the stop, we're going to talk about one here today that got stopped last week. If it goes over the stop, then I'm out. That's how you control your losses, okay? So how do you make money in the market? You have way more wins than you do losses. So day trading is not investing. It's you're producing income. You're chunking it out. You go in and take it out. You go in and take it out. You go in and take it out. When the opportunity arises, but you have to be able to look for it. Okay, and again, set your goal for yourself. Say you want to make $250,000 by the end of the year 2020. Okay, how are you going to get there? How much money do you have to start today? And this is on an average if you'd be risking about $1,000 a trade. Now, if you can't afford to risk that now, then you back it off for what you are so that by towards the end of the year, you're at that point or however long it takes you to, for you to grow your account. Okay. Now, this was a trade. This was on the 6th. Everybody can see this here. This is Boeing. I've been calling Boeing lower for the last few weeks. Um, fell hard on Friday, okay? Boeing definitely looks lower from Friday even into this next week uh, of the 13th. But anyways, Boeing here, this was on January 6th, dropped, fell, broke through the low, rallied, and we shorted this as a day trade. Now you could have done an option in this or you could have shorted as a day trade. So here we shorted it, got the drop. This is a one minute chart. 
but this was a gap down. You can't see the close here before, it's behind the clock, but the stock closed up here around 322.75, boom. Open in the morning here around 329, uh, or three, I'm sorry, 332.75. Open here around 329 and change. Open, dropped, push back, boom. So we didn't go long this to fill the gap, we shorted it. It was a good call and it dropped. So this is what we're looking at. Again, this is volatility because if you're looking at the first 10 minutes here in the morning, you're like, wait a minute, this is went over the high, this went red, this went green on the day, then it went red again, this looks like it's gonna go over the high, what should we do? No, you have a plan of action, which I do and I do it in the pre-market before this even opens, before this even happens, so that you don't get trapped here in the volatility. But the fact that people were going along the stock is what helped push this down and we had it in the right direction, it was a short. And that's where we got the push, boom. So again, this is a nice trade in here, usually looking for a dollar, dollar or more. So again, if you take 500 shares and you're looking for a dollar, it's about $500. You turn it over once, okay? So a buck, this was more than a buck, it was a nice move. Here was the setup. Entry was 321.90, this is a day trade short. Share quantity 3,000, stop was 330.65. This is a really good stock, and a stock of this price point, I mean, very, very good. Normally, you might have a stop that's much, much larger for something like this at this price point, but it was a great stop, 75 cents. So risk was 22.50, exit, I gave it a chance to break 328, didn't do it, and then got out, but it actually did go down to 328, so this was... I could have had a better exit on this. I was trying to see if it would break 328. I'll go back. Exit 328.55. Profit 4,050. Again, this is a day trade where you're in and you're out. It's pinpointing it, going after it like a like a shark goes after it, and you take a bite bite out of it. You shorted this here, got the drop. Again, see this was a lower price. I was trying to give it a chance, trigger give it a chance, give it a chance. And then boom, ended up getting out of it here. This could have gone down lower here. Anyways, it did not, but you could have gotten a better exit out here. But you see this here, time of the day here is 9.40, exit is here around 10.40, so one hour. So we're usually in and out in the morning, okay? Any questions here about BA? Make sense? Um, someone's asking about volume. What is the volume indicator you were using? This, uh, there, I don't have any volume indicator. This is just volume down here shows the volume in the bars. I don't have any per volume indicator per se. This just shows the volume down here. That's it. And I don't, I mean, I'm not, like, I'm just trading stocks that have volume. I don't really, um, I'm not, like, 100% focused on that. I'm 100% focused on the gap on the gap, on the gap, okay? I'm just not trading stocks that don't have volume. I, I don't think they're gonna move, and they're certainly not gonna have big moves, and they're certainly not gonna have moves that are made by institutions. What do I mean by institutional money, hedge funds, big banks? So like we were talking about this earlier, about having goals, does every trade work? No, no, every trade does not work. It's about high odds. Here was a loser, same day. So BA was a win, calm, was a stop. What happened in this trade? Again, stock closed here, back up here, closed up here around 42.50, gap down in the morning around 37.80, dropped. So we shorted this, we were aggressive, <coughs> out of the gate. Had the stop over here, we got stopped down in this taily green bar. <coughs> Excuse me, again, this is a one minute chart. So we got stopped in calm. I never went back into it. Didn't even go back and look at it. Anyways, long story short, with one loss and one stop, it still was positive, okay? And that is how you can do it. So anyways, here is an example of how you can do one trade that's a win and one trade that's a loss and still have a great day. The entry in this was 37.20. This was calm that got stopped. Shares was 2,000, stop was 38.45. So it boomed us out. Risk was 1875. Exit was 3845 at the stop. Loss was 1875. 
I'm just gonna go back and show you this here. That's where we got stopped. So this was the same day we got stopped in this and we made money in this. Uh, someone's asking me about what? Here, let me just see. Explain the entry and exit numbers. Here, enter here. Here's the drop. Didn't get out here, waited for it to go lower, and then it didn't, so I got out. But you could have made another 50 cents. Here's the trade. Short it, get the drop. You could have exited here. I let it base out, took it off when it booped, right in here when it started to flip. But I could have gotten a better exit in here. So that's the move. So this is the move that worked, short, this is the move that stopped. This did not have the follow through here. But my point is that you could have made still 2175 with one loss and one win. Okay? This is why one, it's important to use stops. And two, when you find something good, you they work really well. So that's why you should, your expectation should be of every 10 trades that I call, eight will win and two will lose. But that's okay. That's okay. Because you're still up. Because the ones that work, work really well. And you have to expect, like I said, momentum and volatility. And someone was mentioning volume. You just tend to have the volume because that is what's creating the momentum anyways. Okay? And all the stocks that were trading, McDonald's, BBY, any, anything that I could name, you would know the company. You would, you would have heard of the company. So I would, I would look at it like this. If you're figuring you're trying to get a dollar, okay, you're trying to get a buck out of something, you figure if, you, if you're risking, uh, you're taking a thousand shares, it moves a dollar, you make a thousand dollars. So, okay, I'm trying to get a dollar in most things. Now, there are stocks where I would look for more than that. Again, I'm talking about day trades. I'm not day trading something like Amazon. I'm looking for way more move and something like that, but we're doing options in that. We're not doing margin. But most of the stocks are from a five to $100 range that we do. Occasionally we will do the market, which is expensive now, the Qs of the SPY, and we did the BA. Uh, let me just say, are you saying that you purchased 3,000 shares, not 3,000 stocks? Are you going back to the calm? No, calm was 2,000 shares. This is a short. This is a short. These were two shorts. Calm was a short. BA was a short. We're shorting it. And we're shorting in a margin. Does everyone understand what margin is? Go back to what I was explaining earlier. This is why I bought it up. Okay. When you have a margin account, you don't need exactly $37 times one, one share. Do you understand? You don't need the full cash. A broker gives you margin. It could be two to one. It could be four to one. It could be 10 to one. Some prop places give 20 to one. I'm not saying I necessarily recommend those, but do you understand? And this is very important because BA, for example, BA was the one that was 3,000 shares. This isn't, this isn't cheap. Now, say you're like Melissa, I don't, I can't take 3,000 shares of BA even on margin. Okay, guess what? Do the put. Buy the put. You could have bought a put. In fact, I did call a put in this, but I, I, I don't think I have it in here. I don't remember if I do. But anyways, you could have bought the put. So the put would have been cheaper because you wouldn't need a margin. Whatever the put would have cost, you would have paid. You could have bought the 329 puts or the 330 puts right at the strike here where the entry were taking it. So you could have bought the puts at the strike I called the entry boom and not had to worry about the fact that if you had or did not have the uh equity to do the three thousand shares so there's many many ways to do it that's what i was talking about that's what that's what i was saying um so anyways trading is a great job for yourself because you can work for yourself and i'm telling you it, it's a great job you can be anywhere in the world and do it half my clients are really are not even in the u.s and again, I'm in New York, which is Eastern time zone for the market, but you don't, you could be anywhere, okay? You could have a regular job and trade in between. Most of the trades we do are in the morning, but if this is a new year for you and you didn't do well last year, you've got to take it upon yourself to get, and people say New Year's resolutions. I don't like to call it a New Year's resolution. 
You have goals. You have goals. This is your goal for this year or whatever it is. You say, my goal this year is to earn this much money. Boom. Okay. And my goal this year is to be successful trading or whatever the question is, whatever the, whatever the thing is that you want to do. Okay. Do I call the entries before taking the trade or after you entered? I call it live in live time for the day trades. For the options, I call them ahead of time. Like I might call the options trades. I'm going to show you the options trades in Tesla in the pre-market. Nobody can take any options trades in the pre-market. You can do uh, market trades like the Qs and the SPY entering, I think, 10 minutes before the market opens. But very often, I will see a trade in the morning in the pre-market like Tesla, and I might send out the trades at 7 a.m. Nobody's in them yet. So you take those trades into the open, okay? But the day trades we're just call we're calling live, boom. And actually, you can go into my YouTube channel. It's a stock switch on YouTube, and I think I put the room up for a couple of days this week. You can go listen. Anyways, it's one strategy, which is gaps. One strategy, but expect volatility coming up in this market. This was Google. This had a gap up. This was a nice breakout. Look at the volatility here. Google had a huge move this week. Part of the reason the market continued higher. Google got up over 1,400, okay? Now, I get this question a lot. Earnings season begins Tuesday with the banks. You said, well, do you have gaps all the time? Yes. You have more though in earnings season. We have more trades and more bigger moves and more stocks to trade, more picks in earnings season, which starts this week. So there's four quarterly earnings seasons. We do have gaps all the time, but we have more and they have bigger moves. Now Tesla was an exception. Tesla had a massive move and it was not an earnings gap, but that was an exception, okay? So you can do this, but you have to have goals and you have to stick on top of those goals and you have to have a focus I mean, you, you, have to, you have to understand what you're doing. You have to have the knowledge. And like I said, I think it's important to have a mentor, although that is not necessary. But you may go through a learning curve until you get it right. That's okay. Okay? That's okay. If you look at it as a process, you're going you're gonna to be okay. A lot of people want to be successful, but they really don't have the determination or the motivation to do it. If you have the desire and you have the drive, I absolutely know that you can get there with my support because I've, I've helped people. People are doing really well so far this year. Now, I have been doing fabulous myself, but that being said, it's still the people that are with me that are taking the trades. People are taking the trades themselves, okay? So anyways, most of the trades we do are in and out of the morning. What do I do? How, what am I looking at? I'm looking at a 26 point checklist. The checklist measures the gap by rating it on the daily chart. That's how I know. Is it a long or a short? I'm looking for initially, ideally, a high prob probability that it's going to go all day. Like in an ideal world, I want it to go all day. Again, that's how you can do it for the put or the call for the option or the short or the long for the day trade. <laughs> and ideally, I want a big move. And I, I, an early confirmation, right away, boom, out of the gate, which we got in the VA, and then I got the confirmation in the calm that it wasn't going to have the follow through, and we got flipped out, okay, so I didn't go back after that, <laughs> and I'm looking for precise entries, precise entries, typically in a one-minute chart, and with good risk reward, which in the options, I say 50% to 100% on average, uh, a return on investment, and with the day trades, we're looking for one, one turnover, okay? Anyways, let's talk about Tesla. This is the, the this is the talk of the town, as you want to say, and people now are talking. Somebody said Friday that was in the trading room trial, someone was saying uh, that everybody's in the short. I said, what? What are you talking about? No one should be in the short, and whether it falls or not is irrelevant. This is one of the strongest stocks right now in the market, and it even, to be honest with you, gapped down, if you want to be technical, it actually gapped down on Friday. And look, it went absolutely nowhere. This is snug as a bug in a rug, not going anywhere down. Like, uh, technically speaking, again, I would never be short this, but technically, it did gap down, closed here, open gap down, fell a baby, baby bar on Friday. This is Tesla from Friday. This is Thursday. This is Friday. I'm going to show you the trades I called from, the, from this week. But anyways, this was a long... You could have gone long the stock. You could have bought calls on it. It was huge. Didn't get to 500, okay? Basically almost got there. But anyways, there are people that are short this. I don't know what this does this week. 
I don't think anyone should still be in this long, and I don't think anyone should be in this short. There's no play here right now. You wait. You wait for good setup. So this gap wouldn't have rated well to short per my system on Friday. You wouldn't be long here still because the move was had. This was the volatility, okay? And actually it came in, actually this came in all the way over here. If you really look, this was back in October. Stock closed here, gapped up, broke out, boom. Ran up like the dickens. I called this on the in the trading room letter as a call. This had a big move. I don't have that. I don't think I have this in here. I have the ones from this week. But here was this beautiful, beautiful, beautiful move when Tesla finally looked like a long again. Tesla overall for the most of 2018 looked like crap. Again, the reasons don't concern me. I'm reading the price action and I'm reading the price action and gaps predicted. But here's where you could have gone long. And actually you could still be in a long if you're long as a swing trade since here from October. All right. Typically, when I do options, I'm looking for one week out or a couple of days or two weeks out. But really, if you did a long-term option in this, look at the jump it made. Again, this was the jump up at 300, went up to almost to 500 this week. Anyways, I'm going to go over all of this. But the long and short of it is, however much you would have risked in this trade last week, it was an average of 383% return on investment for these trades. This is not day trades. These are options trades, just so you know with a risk of an average of about $7,000 per trade. I call it a lot of trades in this. We're going to go over every one and every one worked. You could have made 336720 risking about seven grand per trade. That's a lot. That's a lot of risk. If you can risk it, this is how much money you could have made in one week just in these trades. So this is a good example of when you see something that's good, you capture it, you take right on top of it, okay? And you just go for it. And I think as I was calling these trades this week, it's really interesting because I started getting emails from people like <coughs> where people were piling on. And so again, <coughs> this is part of having a mentor. Like I had an email from somebody that says, well, when you called the 480s and I knew it was going to go to 480 when you called the 485s and I held it to 490 and blah, blah, blah. Anyways, let's go back. Monday. This was very aggressive. I saw the stock was gonna make a jump this week. So on Monday, I called the 450s and the 455. Actually, I saw the stock was gonna gap up the next day. So very late, this is late, this is three o'clock. <coughs> I don't always call trades this late in the day. This was an option. I called the 455s and the 450 that expired Friday. So I called them on Monday, expired on Friday, late in the day. Here was Monday. So here, again, I'm really good at reading price action. I saw that Tesla was going to gap up this day. Like I just caught it at the right time. Boom. Called the trades on the letter. You take them before the close. It gapped up. It gapped up over the strike. It was a beautiful call. So the cost of the 455s was six. Contracts was 12. Risk was 7,200. Sold at 42. This was not into the very last move up on Thursday. This was into the Wednesday momentum, which I think was the right decision, even though it went slightly higher. Profit, 43,000. Return on investment was 600%. Again, no matter what you would have risked in this, huge, huge move. Actually, I'm seeing now it's 140. I don't know if I'm going to get through all these in the next five minutes. I'll try. Um, the 460s I called as well. Okay, so then on Tuesday, when I got up in the morning, saw those trades were going to be up once the market opened, saw that the stock was higher, I called the 460 tr strikes, okay, out for Friday. This worked too, 494% return on investment. I also called, then once I saw it moving, this is a little bit into the open, I called the 470s. This was a big one, 705. This is Tuesday into Wednesday, by the way, people. Okay, so I called the 470s. Then I called the 475s around lunch. This was one of the biggest ones. Okay. Then I called the 480s right after this. This is all on Tuesday. All on Tuesday. So the, it's running. It's running, it's running, it's running. At 2 o'clock, I called the 500s. But I called the 500s out till next Friday. I don't think anyone should still be in these. These are probably still up, though, from the time of the date that I called them. Because I called them on Tuesday at two o'clock on the seventh. But I thought it was a good exit on these on the Wednesday. Then on Wednesday morning, 7.30 a.m., I called the 45s. I was trying to do everyone that I possibly could. 
And I called these out till next Friday, which I really didn't even need to do. That is really what's hilarious. I could have called them all for the 10th. I called these out till next Friday, but I still think the exit was good for Wednesday. I called the 490s. Again, this is in the morning. I saw in the morning the stock was going to go. I called the 495s. Every single person that did these trades made a crap load of money. I had one person this week that made $40,000. I had another person that made $21,000. I had another person that made $34,000. They did not risk this much. They just did all the trades and risked an average of between $1,000 and $2,000 per trade. And they did them all. And they just kept piling them in and piling them in and piling them in. Now, in this case here, you could have taken them, gotten out. And the next day, you could have taken them, gotten out. Or you could have taken them on a Tuesday, gotten out on a Wednesday, taken them on a Monday and held them to Wednesday. You could have done them all. Everybody did at least one, but I think some people did more than others because they were just amazed at the momentum that came into the stock so quickly. But what I typically do, if I see something, I capitalize on it. I'm capitalizing the volatility. I'm capitalizing the momentum. And I saw it and, you, and, I, and I reacted, but I saw in the gap. So notice the timestamp on these trades is pre-market. This is the Wednesday. So that was Wednesday. I saw it was going to go poof. Now again, on this day here, it could have done this here. But when I saw into the close that it didn't, and then I saw the gap up here, then I knew it was going to go. But the irony is I could have done them all for a lot cheaper to the 10th because it made the move on the day. Yes, you'll be able to do it on your own. You can do it on your own right after the class if you understand everything. But I think me calling trades like this helps you, helps you to see it. And not only that, it helps you to make money. I have a very, very, very good eye. That's, that's all I'm going to say about that. Um, but the money can come easily when you get it in the right direction. If you don't, you will lose. So then the point is, well, how do you do well? Get it in the right direction. And again, I don't know where Tesla goes this week, but I can tell you a lot of traders are shorted. How do I know? I go to webinars like this one. I'm on everybody's email list too because as a presenter, I get, I get solicited by other companies. Do you have any ideas how many emails I got? Not, not just now, but like from Thursday night into today about people that are calling shorts and Tesla. I don't know if it goes down or not, but there's no way in hell I would short that stock because I'm looking for institutional buying and selling and no institutional selling has come into that stock and institutional buying has come into that stock. And that's how we made the profits that we had this week. This was an exceptionally good week this week. I called other trades as well, but I wanted to point these out because when you see something good, you can capitalize on it over and over and over again. And the nice thing about options is, is it's running and the momentum's in. Options are like a balloon where you're like, and you're blowing the balloon up and then poo, and then the air goes out of it. So you take it and as the balloon is, as you're blowing up the balloon, boom, 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 and then it's getting bigger. And then you exit the trains into the momentum and then shoot, and the air goes out of it. So the air went out of it Thursday and Friday, but it absolutely does not, does not mean that, that the air is completely out of it, if that makes any sense. Um, anyways, my system is based on a gap rating system, okay, where I am rating the gap. One strategy, in my opinion, is all you need to be successful because it's all that I do. I am successful with one strategy. Now, I do it in two different ways, options and day trades. You can use it for one, you can use it for both. I think the benefit of doing options is because you can get trades that are very expensive like Tesla, that have massive moves very quickly without having to have all the cash that you would need even to have a margin account. And I think the benefit of something like the short we did in BA is you can be quick in and quick out in one hour and 30 minutes and make a couple thousand dollars. So there's benefits to day trading and to doing options, but it's both the same system no matter what. I'm looking at reading institutional money and the price patterns and the gaps. And that's why I'm telling you that I don't see anything that tells me Tesla is done, okay? Because no gap downs and that so far are good to short. And when you're looking at something, the big players are the ones that are controlling stocks. So typically, I will call the trades in the morning, <coughs> the options or the day trades. But every once in a while, I'll call trades during the day like I did with those trades from Tesla because they were going. But you can do this from home. You can do this from your office. You can do this from anywhere in the world. So very quickly, my next class 
is January 25th and 26th, 9 to 5 Eastern Time. Cost of the class is $69.99. If you're interested, email me if you want to sign up. I'm doing a New Year holiday special. If you sign up by 117, which is this coming Friday, you would get the trading room and the options newsletter free through the end of March. So basically all of earnings season for $69.99. If you're interested, you must email me to sign up. And if you're serious and you're really interested in the class, email me. I can give you a trial to the room this week. We are going to have another good week. But I will tell you, this week was incredible. So 2020 is here as Optobank. This was one of the traders. This is Tony. Tony lives in a completely different country. Tony made $21,000. Uh, Tony actually has been with me for, for about two years, okay? So I have, I, I've had the business for a number of years, and I, I have really good retention with clients because they're doing well. So, I mean, I, I think that it, if you're serious about doing it, reach out to me. If you want to trial for the room, reach out to me. And um, I'm going to try to do a video on tests on my YouTube, but I've been so busy. It, it, uh, this week, I'm exhausted. I gotta be honest with you, I had an exhausting week. I mean, just watching that Tesla for three days in a row, making sure that everything was going right, it was, it was, it was, it was an amazing week. But you, when, you, when you're watching something like that and you have all that on, like you have to be on your point. <laughs> I mean, you have to be on your tippy, tippy toes. And so it was a long week. It was a good week, but it was, it was tiring. Um, let me just see, any quick questions? Uh, so sorry to. That's okay. It's okay. I know. I'm yeah. Our next presenter.